make sure I share it on all of my stuff as well. Hey, Mother Lily. So I'll uh, just start explaining why we're doing Power Burst this week. Um, I wanted to kind of get ready to close out this year and give you some good teaching to prepare you for next year. Had a whole sermon series I wanted to preach in November. Didn't get a chance to preach it because of some circumstances um, around the passing of our dear beloved Deacon Ronnie French that I didn't feel it was appropriate. So some of the messages I preached were a little bit different. Um, and then I know that Dr. D was preaching yesterday. So um, I want to kind of do this teaching this week and really hone in to preparing you for what's next. Really want to prepare you for what's next. So if you can get your word, we're going to get into the word of God today. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be um, exciting. Good morning, Angel. I see you over there on YouTube. And um, so if you haven't shared yet, tag some people in the chat for me. We're going to have a good time today. I know it's the middle of the morning and some people are just getting off to work. And I just want to be mindful of that. All right. Love, love scripture. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 6 today. Matthew chapter 6 today. All right, let's see who else is on here. Hey, Elder. All right, guys, get on here and share. Let's, let's boost these numbers up a little bit for me. I want to see some numbers before I start praying because I don't want anybody to miss out. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. We in here. Yes, sir. All right, cool. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to get started with a word today. Thank you, guys. Okay, I see y'all coming in. Let's, a little bit slow on the draw, but good to see you nonetheless. Nonetheless. So I'm going to pray. Um, but do me a favor before I pray. I want to know where you guys are at. Are you at work? Are you at home? What city are you in? Give us a quick shout outs. Let's shout your area out real quick. Hey, Shelly. Shout out. Let's where where we're at. Where we're at. Um, for those of you who are new, my name is Pastor Keenan Knox. I'm the pastor of Impact Church, but I host this little thing called Power Burst. It has been something of a passion of mine for the last decade or so. We took a break from it, trying to figure out how to revamp it and and do it in um, you know 2023. So I'm even looking at how we put together teaching, strong teaching on a regular basis. All right, in the office, luxurious Clinton Township, hilarious, Harrison Township, okay, home. All right, guys, I see y'all. I see you home. Good, 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 good. These numbers are going up. If you haven't shared, do me a favor and share. Tag somebody in the chat, somebody you know who needs to get themselves prepared for 2023. In the office in Southfield. Work home. I love it. Hey, Angelica. Good morning, Jelly. How are you? Hey, Crystal. Working from home. All right. All right. Cool. You guys are getting getting geared up. Share, tag some people in line, and let's get ready to start praying. Father, we thank you for today, God. We give you glory. It is Monday. It is a start for so many of a work week, and so many God are looking to be accomplishing things this week accomplishing goals and maybe some people are setting new goals whatever the case may be god we pray right now for them we pray god for this teaching that god it will encourage it will elevate it will um give us an encounter with you that will lift up our lids our lids of leadership our lids of serving and just um, put us in a place where there are no limits God, I ask you to forgive us of any sins, God, that we have committed, anything we have done that's contrary to your word. Help us to be focused and remain focused in you to prepare ourselves for this upcoming year. Let us not wait until December 31st to think about it, but let us walk into this thing with power, with authority, and with strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I want to start with the book of 
Matthew chapter 6, um, verse 31. Verse 31. I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to couple that with Jeremiah 29, 11, which I quote so very often. Um, and Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. So God says, I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. In other words, God knows the end of 2023 before we get to the beginning of it. And he knows those plans for you. So that's an important piece to understand already. As we prepare for 2023, uh, we have to understand it is in God's timing, it's God's plans, it's God's hands that our year will commence. And as long as we stay plugged in to God, we can really fulfill everything God has planned for us. We're close to 2023, right? I, I prophesied this yesterday. I said that we're not even over 2022 yet. That there are some things God wants to accomplish this year in you, some things God really wants to do in your life. There are some dreams that you want to be fulfilled, and you don't have to wait until 2023 for those things to be fulfilled. That is absolutely true. You don't have to wait to 2023 for the things that God promised you in 2022 to manifest. I want to encourage somebody today. Before I get on with the teacher, I want to encourage you right now. That's why you cannot um, allow apathy or allow weariness. The Bible said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Don't get weary. Don't get tired. Don't say, okay, well, you know, I'll just wait to 2023 to get started again. I'll wait to 2023 to get myself together. I'll wait to 2023, and then we'll start going back to school. I'll wait to 2023, and then I'll launch my business because, you know, it's the end of this year. And I, I just want to, I want to combat that kind of thinking with God thinking, with kingdom thinking. God always tells us that he's in the moment with you. He is a very present help. And if I understand that God is the present help and I understand who God is in my life and I understand, understand what God does, I have to always be ready for God's blessings to manifest. God is not tied to time like we are. We are so tied to these false deadlines that we give ourselves that we miss God in the process. So as we put a button on 2022, pull everything out of it that you can. Don't try to think that I said this yesterday in church. Don't try to have this mindset of work where we try to roll over our sick days or roll over our vacations the next year. Maybe I can get a better vacation next year. Maybe I can get, you know, roll these sick days over. God has some stuff that's for you for this year. That's not a rollover. He has some miracles for you for this year that are not rollovers. He has blessings for you this year that are not rollovers. So I want to encourage you not to get into this mindset where I got to wait to roll over into my blessing. So I want to start with that. How we close this year out is going to really in, uh, determine how we open up 2023. If we get the, the right mindset now, we won't have to fight to get it in 2023. Do I have anybody that believe that watching today, listening today, that believe, trust that God is about to do something big, even in 2022? I prophesied this last week that there's a bonus blessing that God wants to give you. Amen. No rollovers. Right. Um, you, you you guys who have worked with unions and stuff like that, you know about rolling over and, and you'll say, well, you'll lose it if you roll, don't roll. Listen, whatever God has for you this year, baby, it is yours to have this year. And I want to encourage some people who are watching right now, who are listening right now, that that's why planning for next year now is so important. Because God already knows the plans he has for you. God already knows the plans he has for you. Somebody put that in the chat. God already knows. God already knows the plans he has towards you. He already knows the ideas, the dreams, the goals, the blueprints that he has that are that are that have your name written on it. That belong to you. And I need you to understand that right now. God has a plan for me. You need to type that in the chat. God has a plan for me. He has a plan that's specifically for you. He has it ordered. He has it step, step by step by step by step. And he always does. Every single year, God has a plan for your 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025. Those are plans that God has for you. There's vision that is tied directly into your gift. There is a plan tied directly into your gift. There are ideas and goals 
tied directly into your gift. Your gift has things attached to it. Don't ever think that your your gift is just sitting there alone and dormant. Yes, it might not be operating in its fullest potential, but there is always, God will never give you a gift without giving you an assignment for that gift, without giving you a plan for that gift, without giving you something to do, something to execute, something to conquer, something to, to, uh, to bless. That's what he's done, right? So if I know God has plans for me, Jeremiah 29, 11, thoughts of good, not of evil. So this is all good for you. All God's plans are good for you. Even though they might not seem good in the moment, all things still work together for good to them that love God. So God has plans working for you. And he has some things that you have to go through and maybe some obstacles that you're going to have to overcome and some situations that you're going to have to get past. Some things in your past you have to put to bed. All of those things are true, but the end goal and the end result is bigger and better than you could have ever imagined. The key is, have you gotten the plan yet? Have you downloaded it yet? Glory to God. You could think we, we could think about it in these terms. We know that whenever you need something from the Internet, if you need a manual, you may have lost your manual for a device that you bought. You can go to the Internet, go to that particular website of the company who manufactured the product. You can go into um, help and you can look up a manual and you can click on the manual. You can right click on it and save to your hard drive. The manual is 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 it's the design it, it it is the operate how to operate that thing right it is telling you in detail it's telling you how to troubleshoot if something goes wrong is all of those things in that plan but that plan does not benefit you if you don't click the link to download if you don't if you don't engage the link if you don't engage the link you cannot download the plan can I tell you right now, our problem is we are not engaging the link that we have with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 that the Holy Spirit, the mind of God, knows what's happening tomorrow. He knows what's happening the next day. God's mind knows all of these things. And we have to tap into the Holy Spirit to be able to know the mind of God concerning our situation on a daily basis. But if we don't tap into the link and download God's plan for us, we are out here flying blind. And there's nothing more dangerous than somebody flying blind. Could you imagine a blind person flying a plane that you're on? It, it is designed to destroy you. And we're out here flying blind because we have not linked up with God to download his plan for our lives. So as we prepare for 2023, which is closer than it appears, the dreams, the goals, the ideas are closer than they appear. We have to engage the link. We have to download the plan of God into our hearts, right? How do we do that? Well, we have to do what Joshua did. Joshua chapter one, you know, I love that scripture. The Bible tells Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I'm going to be in communication with you. I'm going to give you what to do. I'm going to give you the plans because God gave Moses the plans. God gave Moses the design for the tabernacle. God gave Moses the, the uh, Ten Commandments. God gave Moses even, even more law, the Levitical law, all of that stuff. God gave that stuff to Moses. And God tells Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. That there's nothing that you that you have to do that I don't have a plan for you to be successful at doing it. And I want to encourage somebody watching today, listening today, that God has a plan for you and is a plan for you to be successful. But he told Joshua, just study on my word. Keep keep speaking my word. Don't let it depart out of your mouth. Let it be a part of your language. Let it be a part of your discussion. Speak the word. Meditate on it day and night that you may obtain good success, that you may make your way prosperous, that you will deal wisely. All of those things happen based upon our engagement of the word of God and, and engagement with the Holy Spirit. So let's go into um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. And I just I'm going to just lean on this word really quickly. He says, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or whether with all shall we be clothed for all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow for the tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient 
unto the day is the evil thereof. So what God is saying is we have the ability to either take a thought or reject a thought. And that's the thing I want to give you. The skill set that you need to develop is how to receive a thought and how to reject a thought. Because he's telling you, if you take these thoughts saying, what will I do? That, it, you're worrying. That's what worrying is. Worrying is negative meditation. It is taking thoughts to heart. It's taking thoughts to heart. Yes, you cannot control what people say about you, but you can control what you decide to take to heart. You, you don't, you listen, you can't control what, what you did in your past, but you decide whether that past is prologue. So you and I, we have, in order to succeed next year, we have to know that we have a responsibility and accountability to ourselves to accept and receive certain thoughts. That when certain thoughts enter into our mind, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do? Those worrying thoughts. Negative meditation is worry, right? Worry is negative meditation. The more I think on those negative things, the more I produce worry. And worrying leads to weariness. And weariness leads to fainting. And fainting is the devil's greatest, um, his greatest joy and his greatest weapon towards you is to wear you down so you become too weary to experience your due season. Y'all ain't talking back to me. God has a due season for you. God has a plan for you. The only way that you won't walk into the things of God is if you're too weary to make it. If you faint before you fall, before it falls through, before you follow through on it. If you faint before the follow through, you won't experience the manifested blessings of God for your 2023. So how do I not faint? I can't be weary. How do I not become weary? I can't worry myself into wearying. Why, how do I stop worrying? By stop taking thoughts that are contrary to the plans that God has for you. Remember, I told you, there are two thoughts competing for your attention. The thoughts that God has towards you, Jeremiah 29, 11, and the thoughts worrying, saying, what, what's going to happen to me? What am I going to do? What, what's, it's, it's, it's these two competing thoughts that are trying to govern your decisions. They're trying to govern your emotions. They're trying to govern your investment. But can I tell you something right now? You control which thoughts you receive. You control which channel you watch. And if I were you, I would always choose God's plans. Because his plans will eventually lead to my good. The enemy's plans might go through some good areas, but eventually will lead to my downfall. It might look good, but the enemy might give you some thoughts and some ideas, and you might be able to think, this is what I could do. This is how I could work this thing. And it's deceitful. It's against God's plan for your life, but it looks good at the moment. You're looking at it at the moment, but you're not looking at it if it follows all the way through. What are the holes? What are the plot points that, that could stick out and could get you in, at the back end? You and I, we have to be concerned about that because not every good thing is a God thing. And we have to be able to discern what is from God and what is not from God. We have to be able to discern what are God's plans and what are plans contrary to God's plan. What is my will? What is in my flesh? Because that's the debate, right? Because the enemy will throw things out that will minister to your flesh. But God will always give you things that will minister to your spirit. Your spirit will always settle in on what God has said. I can't say the same thing about what's in your flesh. The Bible says in my flesh dwells no good thing. So my appetites, my desires, my sinful desires, my sinful lust, all of that stuff leads me to a place of isolation from God. And I cannot be isolated from God going into 2023. You cannot afford another year of isolation from God. You cannot afford another year where the, your dreams and your visions are not manifesting. You cannot afford another year of frustration. You cannot afford another year of anger or anguish or apathy. You cannot afford it. So if you can't afford it, then stop paying that toll. Stop toiling in that area and start getting into a pattern of hearing from God. And and the way you tell the difference between what is God's plan and what the enemy's plan is, is does it line up with God's word? Does it? 
is it contrary or complementary to God's word? If it's contrary to God's word, it can't be God's plan. If you're purposely doing something that is completely against God's word, it cannot be the thoughts that God has. He says thoughts of good, not of evil to bring you to an expected end. So you got to be able to line up. Does this fit the character and nature of God? For my family, for my finances, for my faith, does this fit the character of God? Because I, I, I just read the scripture, right? Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let's break those two things down. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God are kingdom principles. How does God's kingdom operate? Let me find out how the kingdom operates. Well, part of the kingdom op operation is kingdom keys. No pun intended, KV. Uh, the Bible says we have keys to the kingdom to bind and to loose. Whatever is lawful in heaven is lawful in earth. Whatever is, so we have to understand that. Sickness is not lawful in heaven. It does not operate in heaven. It does not have free range in heaven. So it cannot have free range in earth. So we have to be able to speak to sickness and cancel sicknesses plans toward our lives because that's not God's plan for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I would above all that you would prosper and be in good health. That's scripture. Even as your soul prospereth. So God always wants us to advance, always wants us to move forward. It is God's agenda for us to move forward. So if that's God's plan and I, I line it up with the word of God, I have to know whatever is bound in earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loose in earth is loose in heaven. I need to understand what God permits. What does God not permit? Right. So I have to line up my decisions based on that. My attitude based on that. I will not ever settle for what man gives me. I won't. I will only settle for what God tells me. I will settle for what God tells me because God will only tell me what will benefit me. If I am a child of God and God loves me the way I know he does, then I know that his plans for me are for good. Now, sometimes my plans get in the way because sometimes my plans are based on my flesh, my desires. And, and if, I, if it's based on that, God is not going to be a part of flesh. The Bible says flesh will get no glory in the sight of God. Flesh cannot get glory in the, in the presence of God. So I have to make sure that I am not operating in the flesh because here's what God says. All right. So we, we, we've established that the Bible says that we have to seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Those are two different two, two things that complement each other. The kingdom of God. How does the kingdom work? What are the kingdom principles? Utilizing kingdom principles in the earth will get you success. But then it says, and his righteousness, which means the God's way of doing things. It is the right way of doing things. God's way of doing things is how we do things. It's how we conduct ourselves, how we speak to things. It's how we confront things. We do it God's way. The righteousness, the righteousness of God, walking right, right with God. That's why the scripture says, and, and I love the scripture. Bishop Bennett used to say this all the time. He said, God will withhold no good thing from him who walk uprightly. Favor is released when you're righteous, when you're walking in righteousness. Blessings are released when you walk in righteousness and holiness. But it's when we step away from righteousness and holiness that we don't see the, the faucet of God pouring out the blessings. That that faucet gets turned down because we're not walking uprightly, because we have not chosen to live righteous lives, because we have not chosen to deal well with our brothers. We have not chosen to, to live with the character and nature of God. We've chosen to be more in line with what our flesh says, what our flesh does, what our flesh desires. And it hurts us. It consistently and continually hurts us. It does not give us an advantage in moving forward. Here's what I want to give you. I want to give you an advantage in moving forward. Number one, assess your thoughts. Assess your thoughts, you know, as, as you talk and as you journal, really read back what you're thinking at the time and really line it up with the word of God, right? So if I'm, if you journal every day, let's try this for the, for the rest of this year. We have about 30, 33 days left this year. Out of these 33 days left this year, I want to challenge you to start journaling. Maybe not every day. If you can't do every day, do every day. Just your thoughts. Get your thoughts out there. What are you thinking about? What is constantly on your mind? And then begin to look at what God's word says about those thoughts. 
and to see if those thoughts are in line with God's thoughts towards you. And I guarantee you, the, as you begin to confront certain thoughts, you'll be able to dismiss them, right? To reject certain things that did not come from God and to receive the things that do come from God and meditate on those things. Whatever God says about you, whatever he says towards you, you have to be able to completely embrace it so that you will not be weary in well-doing. Does that make sense? Is that good? Let's see what some of the feedback is in here. Um, yep, every good thing ain't a God thing. That's right, because some things are disguised as good. Is this good, guys? Is this good? Let's get some responses back from you. I like it. I like it. Let me look at YouTube. Good morning, Midtown Detroit. Hey, Valerie. Hope all is good. God does have a plan for you. Um, yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, Jeannie. Yes, guys. So I want to uh, get ready to conclude this teaching. Hopefully it really blessed you today. Hopefully it's getting you on point. Hey, Tammy. Yep, I'm doing pop-ups all week. So set your set your alarms. 10 o'clock every day this week, we are doing pop-up teaching. I'm doing the pop-up teaching. Um, and I want to encourage you to be a part of it. So I do want to encourage you to be a part of what God is doing in this season um, so that you can get a word, right? That's right. So you can get a word. Hey, Tammy. So... This teaching is for you guys. I want to really push you into a place of practicality. You need to become practical in, in um, this ministry, right? In the ministry of your life, in the service of your life. You need to become practical. Becoming practical means you are putting this stuff to, into practice. You're not just getting encouraged every day, but the encouragement leads to manifestation. It leads to action. If all you do is feel encouraged, but you don't you don't really plan out and plot out what you do from here. You're going to be missing out on your best 2023. It's closer than it appears, guys. It's 33 days until we start 2023. And I'm telling you, I'm about to get on my whiteboard and really put some things together. I've been having a lot of thoughts and ideas, and I need to put them together in a way that our church can accomplish them. But if I'm doing that, you need to be doing the same thing because God wants you to accomplish so much in 2023, but you have to be willing to make the appropriate sacrifices, the appropriate sacrifices necessary. And so as I prepare to get off of here, if you feel led or moved to support the ministry in, in the ways of giving, you know, I mean, we honor God for your gift. Um, you can do that by utilizing any of the following things underneath um, as the Lord blesses you. If this blessed you and you said, Pastor, I want to sow a seed, those are the options that you can do and you can sow a seed with. Don't ever feel obligated to sow. Feel inspired to sow, encouraged to sow. The um, Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. If you're cheerfully giving, cheerfully sowing because God put something upon your heart to do that with, feel free to do that with it. I never want to and in inhibit anyone from receiving the harvest that their seed their seed is going to unlock so i thank god for you guys today again please 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 sir please ma'am um don't be weary in well-doing don't be slack in well-doing you got so much god is doing so much in you and he wants to do so much in you that um i don't want you to lose out this year continue to tag somebody like subscribe share Make sure you click the bell for notifications so that you never miss a time when I go live. We're getting geared up for this upcoming Sunday service. It'll be the first Sunday of December. I'm going to uh, let me make this announcement now before it gets out there on social media. We are doing our year end um, meeting with our entire church. We want to do that this upcoming Sunday. And I want to meet with everybody in person that are able to do it. And then we'll schedule a day. Um, where we do virtual meetings. I want to meet with every single member of our church before we end this year out. So I want to talk to you about what 2023 looks like, 
it's our 25th anniversary t- next year, so we're going to be celebrating all next year, and we're going to be doing some amazing things. The only way we'll be able to do it is if we do it together. I love you all, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I so appreciate you. I do. I appreciate you all for everything that you do, every seed that you sow. And if you sow a seed, uh, just put in there hashtag 2023 because I want to pray for your 2023, right? So if you sow a seed today, no matter the amount, I just want to speak over your 2023 that you won't be weary in well-doing, that you won't faint, that you won't miss it, but that you will maximize every day, every day of next year because God has a plan for you. I love you all. God bless you and continue.